Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So another video here on acids, bases, and titration. So let's get moving. Bam! So today we are talking about buffer calculation number one. This is very similar to the common ion calculation that we had done before, but different set of data. So what is the pH of a buffer solution composed of 0.700 molar acetic acid with a 0.600 molar sodium acetate? The Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. All right, so sodium acetate is a salt because it has a sodium ion in it, so it disassociates 100% like all salts do. Okay, sodium ion plus water is neutral because sodium ion is a conjugate to a strong. So, therefore, the only thing that really is important here is the acetate ion concentration. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. So if I have a 0.6 molar sodium acetate, I have a 0.6 molar acetate ion concentration. All right. I also have a 0.6 molar sodium ion concentration, but of course that doesn't matter because that is neutral. So we're going to write the reactants of acetic acid plus water. That is written right here, acetic acid plus water. And we've already talked about this being the example of a weak acid problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the conjugate pairs to the reactants to yield the products. Since acetic acid is an acid, I know that it's going to donate or remove a hydrogen ion to form the acetate ion. Where's that hydrogen ion going to go? It's going to go to that water to form the hydronium ion. Okay, so here are the conjugate pairs of the reactants. Okay, so I got acetic acid plus water yields acetate ion plus hydronium ion. Notice another thing about these, all these equations here, is that they are balanced for both charge and mass. On the reactant side, okay, I have a net charge of zero. On the product side, I have a net charge of zero. Okay, and the same number of carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens are on both sides. Please check that out. Now, of course, in order to do any one of these problems, we have to do an ice table because this is a weak acid. Okay, so therefore, it's, because it's not a strong acid, it's a weak acid, we have to do an ice table. So here's that ice table. Initial change equilibrium. Okay, what's the initial concentration of the acetic acid that was given in the problem at 0 0.700 molar? So I'm going to plug that in right there for the acetic acid. What's the initial concentration for water? Well, I don't really care because it's a liquid and it will not be included in the Ka expression. What's the initial concentration for the acetate ion? Well, that is dependent upon the sodium acetate being a salt and dissociating 100%, and that was 0 0.600 molar. And then the initial concentration for the hydronium ion. Now, the hydronium ion, like on all the other equilibrium reactions that we have been doing, on the initial portion is going to be a zero. Okay, now we're going to look for the change column here. Now, if it's on the reactant side, it's a subtraction because you are decreasing those concentrations over time as you go from reactants to products. The products will increase over time, and that will be a plus sign. We are also using the stoichiometric coefficients, and everything on this equation is a 1. So for the change on the acetic acid, it's going to be a minus 1x. For the water, I ignore it. For the acetate ion concentration, for the change, it's going to be a plus 1x, and for the hydronium ion, it's a plus 1x. So to get the equilibrium column, I'm going to add up the initial and add up the change. That's 0 0.700 minus x. That goes right there in the equilibrium. The water, again, I don't worry about that because it's a liquid and liquids are not included in K expressions. The acetate ion concentration is 0 0.600 plus x. And the hydronium ion concentration is 0 plus x, which is x. So, now what I need to do is I need to write the Ka expression. The Ka expression, just like all K expressions, is the products over the reactants with the stoichiometric coefficients as exponents excluding solids and liquids because they do not affect the Ka value. So therefore, the water is not included. 
So my Ka expression is right here. That's Ka is equal to acetate ion times hydronium ion. Those are both in the numerator with exponents of ones. And the acetic acid concentration in the denominator with an exponent of one. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to plug in my equilibrium sets of data into this equation as well as the Ka that was given in the problem. All right, so I got 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. That's the Ka that's on the left-hand side of the equals. On the right-hand side, I got 0 0.600 plus x times x. In the denominator of that right-hand side, I got 0 0.700 minus x. Okay, and remember, with an equilibrium problem, we are going to be asking ourselves this question. 100 times the K, is that less than the initial concentration? And if that is less than the initial concentration, then I'll be able to use the approximation. Okay, so 100 times 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5, is that less than 0 0.700? Yes, it is, so I'm going to get rid of that minus X in the denominator. Okay, I'm going to ask the other question. 100 times 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Is that less than 0 0.600 molar? If that's a yes, of course it is. Then I'm going to get rid of the plus x in the numerator term. I can't get rid of the x because, of course, well, that x by itself is what I'm trying to solve for. So I'm going to rearrange this equation and get rid of the minus and the plus x okay, in the denominator and numerator respectively. And that's the number set that I get here. So now I have 1.8 times 10 negative 5 is equal to 0 0.600 times x divided by 0.700. I'm going to solve for x. That is, I'm going to multiply the Ka by 0.7 and divide the Ka by 0.6 in sequence. And then I will solve for x. And x is equal to 2.1 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay? All right. So again, does your approximation work? Is it true that the approximation works. And you should be able to plug this value in for x under your equilibrium concentrations and go 0 0.700 minus 2.1 times 10 negative 5. What number do you get? 0 0.70 using significant figures. Okay. For the, and that is for the acetic acid concentration. For the acetate ion concentration, 0 0.600 plus 2.1 times 10 negative 5. What do you get? 0 0.600 using significant figures. Does the um, approximation hold true? Most certainly it does. But I'm actually not solving for those um, equilibrium concentrations, although you just did. I'm actually solving for the pH of this. Okay. So I got the hydronium ion concentration as 2.1 times 10 to the negative 5 because that is what x is equal to under the equilibrium set. So I'm going to take the negative log of this value, and that will give me my pH. So the pH here for this is 4.68 for this buffer solution of acetic acid at 0.7 and acetate ion at 0.6. I'm hoping that this problem and this numeric value makes sense here for an answer of pH of 4.68. Because it's acetic acid, Okay, it should have a pH that is less than 7 because it's an acid. But it has a little bit of its conjugate base here as well. So it's not as um, acidic as one might think because it has its conjugate base. So it has increased in its pH because of the conjugate pair. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, I am the crazy hat chemist, and of course, I got a great crazy hat here for you. I got this from one of my students, and thank you very much. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'm going to see you for more cool chemistry problems, especially acids, bases, and we are going to be doing some titrations here pretty soon, very soon. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.